Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. We acknowledge today that our worship is taking place in the Aboriginal territories of the Salish and Kootenai people. I also want to welcome those of you who are online. We are glad to have you with us this day. It is hot, it is humid, and we are grateful for a place to gather in spite of it. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in saying the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 26, through chapter 12, verse 13a. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. Nathan came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, one rich and one poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anoint you king over Israel and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and taken his wife to be your wife and killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, 
for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our response to the first reading is a portion of Psalm 51. Please pray it with me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, What does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above and all the heavens, so that he fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of all full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I just want to make sure everyone can hear me all right in the back. I know there are fans running and there may be there. Can you hear me okay? Okay, thank you. I'm not used to this heat any more than you are. Maybe some of you from the south or the east do better, but I'm a Californian born, so uh, west and dry is about what I'm used to. So this morning I would like to stay with that Hebrew lesson about David. It's the piece that comes after last week's reading that he was with Bathsheba, the Hittite's wife, and that she was pregnant from that. He is trying to cover his tracks. He has done everything he can to try and get Uriah to go, to be with his wife, to be off the front lines, to find a way to make it feasible that nothing happened. And Uriah just isn't going to do that. He is thinking about others. He's thinking about those on the front lines that he left. He's thinking about those who serve David, and they are doing their best to do what he asks, and he wants to be with them and stay focused with that and does not want to be, shall we say, in a better space than they are. David tries a couple of times, even makes him drunk to try to do this. So by the time this story is being told by Nathan, we now know that Uriah was killed on the front lines, where he was sent back and put in the front in order to be killed. Or that was the hope for David. Not one of David's proudest moments. A lot like us. Maybe not to that scale. But we all have our moments. 
and some of them can be extremely ugly. So Nathan is speaking to David, and he describes this poor man, this story about a poor man who has this beautiful lamb, who has a family, who is doing the best he can with what he has. And this rich man who is able to have anything he wants to care for a traveler who's coming through. But instead of using one of his own, of which he had many, he takes the little lamb from the poor man and his family. Righteous indignation comes out of David's mouth, right? Whoever that is should be killed, punished. To which we hear the phrase, you are the man. You are the one. I find it difficult to believe that unless we're really, really young, we haven't had an experience where those words echo for something that happened in our lives way back. Could be when we're tiny, could be middle-aged, but there was some time when we had that moment of, uh-oh, I've been found out. Not only found out, but out of our own mouths, knowing what we did was wrong, because he knew what the rich man had done to the poor man was wrong. He just hadn't put the two together yet. But you are the man. You are the one. Suddenly, it's in 3D. I know I've had moments like that. And I remember them vividly. It's something that sticks with you. And hopefully we learn from it, but it doesn't mean we won't trip up yet again. Power can do that to us. Thinking we don't have enough can do that to us. Focusing on ourselves solely, but not in balance with love of God and love of neighbor. Those are the times when we're most apt to betray someone, to know that we're doing something wrong and still do it, or to do it and then suddenly realize it and then spend our time trying to figure out how to cover it up. It is a most human thing to do. Doesn't make it the right thing to do or the best thing to do, but it is part of who we are in our brokenness. We're not perfect. We don't have it all together. And right now we're going through, probably in my lifetime, one of the most difficult times in our nation's history for all kinds of reasons and in the world itself when you think about the big picture and all that is going on. I don't know if you've noticed lately, but I have. How many people are edgy? How many people are fed up, tired? Tired of masks, tired of fires, tired of heat, tired of pandemic, tired of political parties, tired, edgy. Now, some of that's because we have been and still are in a pandemic. 
And we have to be alert at some level to that. It's on our minds. Our bodies are certainly attuned to it, whether we're thinking about it, because it's all around us. So too with the fires and the heat. Went to some of the most hot places I've ever been other than Arizona, where it was 115 in Oregon. Now, I've been to Oregon a million times, never have I experienced that, or over 100 five days in a row in the Northwest. That just isn't in my experience. So it's been going on for a time, and it's not done yet. And in the midst of all of that, we've had mixed messages, people taking advantage of other people, whether it's about masks, whether it's about the truth, whether it's about facts, whether it's about you name it, fill in the blank. It is very hard right now to trust our communications, to feel as though we know what's coming next. That adds to our edginess and being tired and being short and saying flippant things and discounting one another. I'm pretty sure you've run into that, if not in the last week, in the last few weeks. Unless you live in a real tight bubble. During times like this, we can do things we regret, say things we regret, discount others. And we might say, well, I was just teasing. I was kidding. I was just having some fun. That works when it's not in this environment we're in. But right now, it doesn't feel fun. And it's hard to trust what's teasing and what's not. How do you deal with that? How do we as Christians deal with that? We can't control everything. But we do have our individual choices. And we can pause before we speak, or pause before we act, or check in with ourselves and ask God to reveal with that son what we're about to step into that perhaps we might step back instead of forward and avoid a situation that we later regret. That confession in the psalm and the confession that we say each week is one of those moments of getting in touch with the fact that we do these things so often we hardly think about it, unless it's a really big one, where we know in our gut we did wrong there. We harmed another. And we're complicit, perhaps, with another. And the light bulb is shining on us. And the only thing we can do is go to our knees and pray. The message from Nathan is justice will be served and God will do that. But that doesn't remove our need to own what we've done and to allow God to set us back on a new path.
because the path we took off on was not helpful. I want to ask you to be especially aware in these times, not only for caring for yourself, but thinking about those around you, thinking about the big picture. What can you do to ask God or the Spirit to aid you in lifting up others rather than tearing them down and encouraging others rather than topping them with another message above theirs, so to speak. It's hard to do because right now it's coming at us from everywhere. But it is who we are as a people of God to be willing to catch ourselves and not go there. And our words harm as much as any physical act. We think they don't, but we know better. Let's start with the words. Let's start with thinking about each other as the children of God, the people that are out and about, and this beautiful earth as of God. That unity that Paul talks about in the second reading is really a unity of God's creation as a whole. So don't let us break it down into tribal wars. Who's better than who? Let us be mindful. Let us be grateful. And let us live out of that place of gratitude so that God's love does come through and does bring forgiveness and hope and joy in the midst of difficulties that God may produce transformation and grace, renewal. Let us love one another. Amen. Please stand and let us join together in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came out from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The prayers of the people are guided by Form 3, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer and in the service leaflet. Please pray them with me. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we may all be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and for Mary Stebbins, our bishop, and for our priests and deacons at Holy Spirit and across the diocese. We pray for all bishops and priests and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for all firefighters and for those who support them, and we also pray for the fire-quenching gift of rain. Restore with your love all those who are in prison, poor, hungry, oppressed, addicted, homeless, sick, suicidal, or fearful. Today, we pray especially for Aon Weedell, Dick Weedell, Chris Roberts, Don Russell, Maggie Teague, Carson Wood, Mary Ellen, Graham, Don, Charlotte, Mariana, Joel, Thomas, Paula Houston, Michael John King, Jasmine, Linda, the Hedrick family, James, Billy, Sam Orr and family, Cal, Frank, Anthony and Benjamin Horton, Jeffrey Allen and Foxy, the Leanne Martin family, the Hannah Abbott family, the Carey family, the Yeager family, the Jesse Sims family, Colin Bingham, Dante Olson, Bob Deaton. And we also pray that there would be an end to harm of the innocent. And in silence or aloud for any others who we lift to you now. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray today for John Jack Jordanet and for our loved ones who are no longer with us, give to the departed eternal rest, light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Take a moment to share a sign of the peace. I have a few announcements. You may be seated for just a moment. I don't know how many of you are aware of the fire that is up, the new one that started yesterday up near Finley Point, up on the Mission Mountains. Uh, it has jumped that road, 35, and evacuations continue to be happening there. So please keep those folks in your prayers. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. There is fire, Boulder fire. It has a number behind it, like 2,300, 2,500, something like that. That is above the Finley Point area in the Mission Mountains. It started yesterday. It uh, reversed direction and started coming downhill in the middle of the night and has jumped 35. They have lost several homes already. So please... Um, Keep those folks, especially in your prayers right now. Uh, these fires could be anywhere, could be right here in a few days. We just don't know. So uh, be very careful out there. And uh, we do have some folks that have property up that way. So hopefully all is well with them. I haven't heard anything further at this point. Certainly we know the smoke is billowing in and some of you if you're down the Bitterroot are experiencing that even more than we are so I've been thinking about you a lot please note we have a memorial service for Jack Jordan A that will be held August 7th that's next Saturday at Discovery Alliance Church that's a church that's behind Home Depot and uh, everyone is invited. Anyone who wants to be there is welcome. And then there will be, um, after the reception, an interment service outside here at 4 p.m. So if you can't make one, you might be able to make the other. But just so you know, the information is in your bulletin. There is a special free film screening of Jacinta, a film about generational trauma that is a uh, parenting place emphasis. Dorsey asked that we highlight that for you and encourage you to uh, participate in seeing that. We have some news from the Vestry. Uh, Vestry has approved the use of our, at least two thirds of our downstairs space in the parish hall for the Christian Montessori school that currently uses a portion of the Orthodox Church as well as the Presbyterian Church. And they are seeking to have a place for a year or two where they can care for six to 15 year olds or 12 year olds, excuse me, uh, no more than 15 children, but to be able to have a place that they can uh, be because the one at Presbyterian Church is no longer available to them. The Vestry has agreed to that. They are going to start moving into the facility here on Monday. The school doesn't actually start until September 1, but you will see um, children coming and going. They will be starting somewhere around 8.45 in the morning. Drop-off will be around that time out front. They will be using primarily this outside entrance with the downstairs, cement downstairs and in that we don't use, but it goes right to a mud room down there. So uh, they will be using that. They will also use one day a week uh, for a few hours the kitchen so they can have some cooking classes that might be outside teaching dance or having some activities like that. And um, I'm trying to think what else. The tower room during the day will be a teacher's lounge available to them. The specifics of the lease are being typed up now in, an, in a form that we can review tomorrow night as a vestry and finalize. 
uh, but they've already approved them coming in and we're just working on the details now. But I thought it was important that you know about that. The demand is so high for, for these schools uh, all over town that the enrollment's already full and she's not even going to put up a banner outside saying what's there because she can't handle the volume of calls that keep coming in. So the demand is increasing with the numbers moving into town. Lastly, I'd like to speak a bit about COVID and masks. I sent out a note from the rector that many of you have seen. I have also received a letter from the bishop sent out to clergy and to uh, wardens, clergy or vestry wardens. In it, she says that we should be looking at our county for guidance, uh, that while Missoula has a good rate for vaccination, the rates at which COVID is starting to take off right now, day by day, is meaning that we probably will be in masks sooner than later. Now, some of you won't want to wear a mask. I get it. I'm going to ask you to wear a mask in here. I'm going to ask you to wear a mask in the office or anywhere else in the building by next week. I do that because I'm responsible for the whole. And at this point, I'm thinking about our children who aren't vaccinated yet. I'm thinking about adults I know who want to come and aren't vaccinated because they medically can't have it. It's a simple thing for us to put a mask on and then take it off. It's hot, it's hard to use. I get it, I really do. But I can tell you right now, by next Sunday, we will be wearing masks, okay? And that's on me. I'm making that decision based on what I'm hearing elsewhere. I'm not waiting for the bishop to tell us to do it. She's had to do that already up in Flathead because their numbers are skyrocketing. I talked with one of our own here who works in the hospital over at uh, St. Pat's, and her practice now is wearing them whenever she's in a public place so that she doesn't uh, contract it or doesn't give it. And the fact that even though we're vaccinated and I can still be a transmitter in huge volume means we have to change and think about that balance I was speaking of earlier. So I'm not real thrilled with it, but I also understand it. My science side says that, but my Christian side says, hey, this is something we're gonna need to do. And hopefully by doing so, we won't have an explosion and we won't have our hospitals full. I think that's enough to be said. Just want you to understand where I'm coming from, okay? Okay, and anyone who has a birthday or anniversary you would like to celebrate today? Please turn in your prayer books to page 830. I'm a 830. And Judy, I'm going to ask you to come right here. Thank you. And we'll say prayer number 50 for Judy. Okay. We're also birthdays. Oh, birthdays? Yes. Oh. Oh. Anniversary in a couple of weeks. And, oh, okay, okay. You faked birthdays. me out. You faked me yeah. out on that. So anniversary. And two birthdays coming up. Anniversary coming up. I'll be darned. All righty. There we go. So we'll start right over here with the birthday prayer. Number 50. Oh God, our times are in your hands. hands. Look, Look with favor, we pray, on your us. servants as, as they begin another, another year. year. Grant, Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen, strengthen their trust in your goodness all, all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hang on, we got an anniversary yet. Okay, you're going to do that we'll later? Yeah, we'll oh, you're going to do that later. Yeah. Okay, got it. Got it. Later. See we'll celebrate in a few weeks. Yep. <laughs> All right, very good.
Let us bring offerings and come into God's courts with thanksgiving and praise. Eucharist comes to us from our Enriching Our Worship series. It's an opportunity to expand the language of God, both from scripture and, and music and so on. So please do have your bulletins handy because you will not find this in the prayer book. It is being, as the General Convention would say, it is part of our collective liturgies that are available to us and we will be experiencing some of the other ones that have been approved that will be coming into that file if you will please stand the lord be with you, and also with you. lift up your hearts we lift let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Continuing with the post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.